Welcome again to the Tulsa Croquet Club, northeast corner of La Fortune Park in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Just north of the tennis courts, you can see the two courts we've played on in Tulsa for years. Above that, in the long rectangle, is the new complex of four courts. The incoming president of the Croquet Club is Anna Hansen, who's also the tournament director of this golf croquet event that's a companion tournament to the Midwest U.S. Rules Regional Labor Day weekend 2022. The golf croquet games were all played on that court at the top of that rectangle. Brian Hovis is your videographer, commentary by yours truly, Russ Dilley. This tournament features a number of locals from Tulsa and Oklahoma City and five players from the Oklahoma Wesleyan University croquet team, which won the most recent collegiate national championship. This game features Lori Dash, who with Fort Austin is from yeah, Oklahoma City. She volunteered to fill in at the last minute when somebody didn't show up, so we'll take it easy on her. Okay. Um, Looks like she's played some croquet, though. Okay. She's taking on Stanley Fisher, who's the son of the coach, Steve Fisher, who I think took over about a year ago from Wendell Thompson, who was the longtime coach and driving force of the Oklahoma Wesleyan croquet team, and he's been my doubles partner a couple of times. You know what I'm going to say. He looks like an athlete. He's got to fix that split grip, man. <laughs> Split grip or not, that's an excellent shot. from the sublime to what I think Stanley would certainly agree is the ridiculous. It's not that you can't do it with a split grip if you're a good athlete. It's that it's very hard to be consistent.
Aiming for a position maybe wired from black. She's trying for the block, but that leaves that's an easy jump shot for Red that she might have been better off with a snuggle get right up against Red so it can't do anything. And Stanley draws first blood. We let him play that first hoop, but I'm going to edit the rest of this so it's more like a highlight reel because I want to work in the end of the game between Anna Hansen and Mariah Chitwood where they just caught fire after hoop seven in that game. Here all the balls are together in front of hoop two. Stanley might want to watch videos of James Deeth, the English player. He uses a 42-inch mallet, stands straight up, lets the mallet do all the work. This may not be a double tap, but it's definitely a beveled edge, which is why Black goes so far. She was trying to hit a stop shot, though, so we'll give her an A for effort. These two are just having too much fun. But that is the purpose of the game, after all. They're really playing it like a friendly and just sharing all kinds of advice, which is their prerogative. Since Black can't score the hoop, a jump shot would be a good option as well.
the goal of a lot of the teaching about the stroke is to keep the path of the mallet head as flat as possible. If you keep the top of the shaft in one place and generate the force with active wrist action, you get a very steep arc, and this can happen. We could debate for hours here about the merits of a stop shot versus a center ball drive shot. But he chose a stop shot and got it done really well. First rule of golf, croquet, you got a hoop shot, take it. And by hoop shot, I mean one you think you can make. The criteria are different for you and me versus Matthew, Ben, and Reg. Nice idea, pretty close to Wired from Black. Stanley shouldn't feel too bad about this next shot because maintaining your accuracy while trying to hit it hard takes a lot of practice. And a nice flat pinch on swing. This shot is basically perfect. Oh, that's Except that Red plays next and now has an easy in off. Beautiful. Oh my God. Four zip and on to hoop five. Despite the asymmetrical force from his right hand, look how straight his swing path is.
And Lori's on the board, and they're off to hoop six. Since Laurie volunteered to fill in, she probably didn't bring her own mallet, so she's getting another one from Mariah Chitwood. This is actually against the rules. You can only change your mallet if you threw yours in the lake or there's something wrong with it. But Laurie's a volunteer. He went from ridiculous back to sublime that time. Five to one for Stanley and now hoop seven. which he scored with red. He only needs one more. How long can she hold him on? Well, at least one more hoop, probably. Stanley got his one more to take our lovely volunteer seven to three. And now we join Mariah Chitwood, who just scored hoop five. Blue's already down by six. He just played red. And Anna Hansen, the incoming president of the Croquet Club, comes in with black. Oh, I'm fine. Look good. Stand still, let me get your picture. So I, I got your name, but I want to make sure I've got all the attributes. And, okay. What's her name? 
USCA website lists Anna's golf croquet handicap as six. Mariah's is listed as 20, but there's no way that's right. I would say they're about the same. Every shot makes somebody happy. And the randomness of golf croquet is one of its charms. Now at hoop seven. This nice little center ball clearance is superb because it gives yellow a single ball target on what it needs to clear. And she almost got the block with black. No, a couple hours. Clears are pretty good. Isn't that what you do? Yeah, I sell them. The balls are close together, like less than a ball diameter. Your stop shot better be good, or you'll double tap. Closer than that, you need to hit it off to the side. Check out Jeff Sue's video on YouTube about this. Just type in double tap golf croquet, and you'll see it. There's no hard and fast rule about how close the balls can be. It's more the behavior of the striker ball that a referee would use to decide whether there was a double tap if it wasn't obvious. I might have to go. Let's I focus on this one. Yeah. Because this is good footage. And the kids can play games. The only thing I didn't get of their game was the very beginning. I think I got the score before. I can't score. Double bang game with everybody going for either two or eight. I promise not to do this again. Watch Anna's hands when she hits the ball. By moving her hands forward, she drags the mallet through the ball with relatively passive wrist action. We'll talk about Mariah's stroke later. The interesting thing here is, and I'm sure you've noticed, she's about to hit a wrong ball, and it's an opponent ball. She hit the wrong ball. The remedy is replace and replay the correct ball. Had Anna hit her shot before they realized that Mariah had hit a wrong ball, then they would the use ball. a penalty she area continuation. You can check it out in the rule book. So what should happen is Mariah should be playing yellow now. Rule 10.5.3. Since she missed, the rules snafu probably didn't matter because yellow 
would have just cleared her block blue anyway, and red would have had the same shot. Had she made that hoop with blue, different story. For the next few hoops, these two are about to light it up. Whoa, she could drop the mic on that one. So you got that distance dialed in. That was intentional because there's no way Mariah's going to clear black. Or is there? <laughs> Now both black and blue are hampered on their way to hoop 10. You could make the argument that long setups are the most important shots in this game. What, me hampered? No problem. My goodness, 30 foot hoop shots, through the hoop rushes, perfect cross court setups. What else can they do? Oh, yeah, perfect rush into the hoop.
Blue's in position to knock Yellow out. I think this jump shot she's going to try is impossible. If she had just snuggled up to Yellow, she might have been able to give Blue the opportunity. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention uh, Mariah's swing. Notice how she does it all with her wrists at the end. These gals are both good athletes, though, because despite what I just said, she hit a good shot. These two do not mess around. Mariah Chitwood takes Anna Hansen 7-5 to five in the best game we've seen so far. And now the promise breaking news about the Oklahoma Wesleyan Croquet team. If you watched the previous video, you already know this, but this is exciting. These four are part of the team that won the most recent collegiate nationals for Oklahoma Wesleyan University. And also on that team was Stanley Fisher, who's featured in the next video. And now some breaking news. I'm recording this on October the 10th. After this tournament six weeks ago, I mentioned it to Damon Bidencope, our president, who said, hey, we need more players for the under-21s in New Zealand in February. Phone call to Anna Hansen and Stuart Price got things going. And... I talked to Steve Fisher on the phone today and found out that these kids got invited to Sarasota for an intense makeover of their games. Jeff Sue, Mike Albert, and the last two world champions, Matthew Essick and Ben Rothman, produced the result you see here. And this total transformation is a tribute to these kids' willingness to listen and learn. And they found out yesterday that Stanley and Alex have been invited to play in the under-21s in New Zealand in February. I feel so fortunate to be a part of this community that plays croquet. So thanks again to Stuart Price. Subscribe, give us a like, hit the notification bell. The AC Nationals are coming up.